like they lost shingles during the storm. Or someone did. So tell me about this place. This is where my ancestors are buried. Actually, it was it was grown, it was completely grown over, and we came in and we took down several trees and cleaned it up and tried to to get it to where we could take care of the cemetery once again. Because we just past generations had kind of let it get too overgrown. So you said somebody came in. Who came our, in and fixed our, it up? Our family members came in and fixed it up and then the Confederate Sons of America came in and replaced the tombstones for the Confederate soldiers that are buried here. Members of your family? Yes. This is my great-grandfather on my mother's side, my mother's grandfather. Well, the house is falling. That, that that older farmhouse that's right set over there that's being is falling down. That was his home. That was my great grandparents' home. My parents still live on this road too. And um, the rest of my family is the Henley, and they live further south in Pungu. You're related to the Henley, to I Barbara. Know. Yes. Okay. Well, her husband, yes, Winky. Yeah. He's like my second cousin. Okay. On my grandmother's side. Small world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I envy people who can document their family line like this. Yeah. This is really special. It is, it is, I agree. We have documentation from the 1700s for this family being buried here. We have, and a lot of our, my family's also buried off Sandbridge Road across from Nemo United Methodist Church. One of my co-workers, she asked me which side of the war my ancestors fought on. <laughs> <laughs> so which side do you think they fought on? <laughs> oh, that was funny. Do you get that a lot? I do. People don't realize it. They don't know history. They don't, they don't realize this was the capital of the Confederacy. Do you ever get negative reactions from people sure. who are not local? Sure. You, you do. You do. Because, you know, there's a lot of people from the north and of here. And, of course, I don't... I never condoned slavery, but I mean, this was part of their culture. This was, this is where these people grew up and they were just fighting to, you know, to hold on to home, right. <laughs> you know, and the only way of life they knew, so that's all. They were just, you know, so, and they were, most of them were probably very young. I have actually all the paperwork on these young boys at home. Does, does that kind of, uh ride still run deep here do you think yes very we had the ceremony here when when we replaced the the tombstones and yeah. we had the whole the full regimen and the the gun salute and everything you know with the uniforms and everything and i'm sure some other families around here have done that for their for their family but nothing that's actually organized outside of just family units find it to be a friendly place, although since so many of the older families uh, are related to each other, um, they know each other very well and sometimes newcomers 
uh, have a little difficulty adjusting, although uh, we who are from Pongo feel like we're very welcoming. It's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place to raise children and have them have a sense of family and community and um, strong roots to know where they're from. What else comes to mind as you uh, think about um, uh, Pungo as it was and as it is today? Well, I only know it as it is today, and one thing that especially impresses me is that I would consider it to be very much a church community. Mm. Not that everyone goes to church, but the, the churches are a very important part of the life of the community. Every time there's five Sundays in the month, they have what they call singspiration, where we meet at one of the churches and all the churches are invited to bring their choirs to sing. And it's a time to get to know everybody. The other thing is that uh, the, the spirit of the people in this little village of Pungo is that of wanting to make it a community where people know one another, care for one another, sort of the way it was in the old days. Yeah. But there are a lot of new families moving in. Um, a lot of building going on, not so much now with the economy the way it is, but um, when I first got here, a lot of building and new people moving into the area. So there's a lot of old timers as well as new people that are around. So that makes an interesting mix. Change is hard. And so much is changing in Pungo that the, the, the defensive walls are going up because they're, they're trying so hard to hang on to what is. I know you don't know very much about uh, that situation with uh, with the monks. If you felt comfortable saying anything about that, you yeah. Could... The the only thing that I know is what we read, and and <laughs> and the impression that we had was that the 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 traffic concern is the reason that the local people in that area were opposed to it. Um, but um, uh, beyond that, I don't. Yeah, we I don't... we have not met. The, the monks. We probably no. should have taken time to go and look them up. We just, we haven't. Yeah, so I think you can get more information from some other people in that area about that. That was the only issue anybody seemed to have about it was the extra traffic. Not that it was a Buddhist group that was in. Only thing I heard was they talked about the statues that were in the yard and that it had gotten to look, you know, they were saying it was looking kind of junky. I know the monks purchased the home on West Neck Road and it was formerly a residence. And um, I know the Pungo community was a little upset because of, I think some of them were upset because of, they, they turned a residence into sort of what we would call a church. And, um, and then there were, the, were some statues out there that were kind of oversized, <laughs> um, but I I think um, what I know about it is it was the fear that kind of come into the community of something that they were just not accustomed to, had never been faced with anything like that, and actually never thought anything that type of uh, religious practice would probably come into Pungo and they, they didn't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to deal with it. <laughs> Do you think there's a place in Pungo for Buddhist monks from Vietnam? For the monks, yes. The, the question is whether, as, you know, the, the non-development should include not having a major retreat center or congregation with a lot of people coming in in a residential section. That's, I think that's the big issue there. But I, I don't, I have not heard anything against Vietnamese or Buddhists. Mm -hmm. It's simply been, this no. is not the place that is supposed to be a residence that they have bought and now they're trying to turn it into something else. It seems right. like that's the thing. Okay. But I do think them not being from America also plays a part into it because it's just so foreign to the community. Um, I mean, there's like four or five churches in Pungo, and most of them are Baptists or Methodists, and that's that's what you grew up as. And um, you know, it's it's 
it's the fear of the unknown of, of maybe having their children exposed to that religion and not knowing how to explain it or how to counteract it. Well, if we're strong in what we believe, there's no need to fear. That's just more of a reason why we need to work harder at educating our children of what we believe. Because obviously I think we're right, but, you know, and to teach them why. But not to the point that, you know, you, you're intolerant of others. Do you think there's a place in Pungo for Buddhist monks from Vietnam? Mm, I think. In my mind, yes. Um, as long as they are willing to embrace the culture around them and not close themselves off from the people, then I, I think, you know, they could live harmonious, harmoniously in Pungo and, and be there as part of the landscape. I'm not sure they would ever actually <laughs> become part of the, the culture, but um, there's hope, maybe. <laughs> Do you think there's a place in Pungo for Buddhist monks from Vietnam? Yeah. I think there would be. I mean, I'm sorry it's happened that they've had to leave. I come here to convert American to Buddhist, to Buddhism. We come here to help the people who like to study something they didn't have a chance to study before. Like um, Thich Nhat Hanh, he tell that you, sh you should keep your tradition, your religion, but learn something that can benefit to help to make your root go deep and, and strong. I just, I love that comment. All the Buddha teaching is to help a human being have a good life and how to help yourself to understand the situation, the karma, and the environment around you how to accept yourself and accept other people. And I can use that for talking with uh, a Christianity. Just how to live happy. Everyone would like to be happy. And I can share the Buddha teaching with them. So what had happened was, before I got involved, they did obtain a conditional use permit from the city, but only for one year. And the permit expired. And the city, back in August of uh, 08, was not going to uh, extend the conditional use permit, which meant, basically, that the monks had to, prevent, had to stop worshiping. And I, I thought it was odd from the very beginning that the city would permit the use to go on for another year and then all of a sudden just draw the line in the sand, if you will. And I think the reason for that is that there was some, um, there was opposition from neighbors about that. Good evening. Uh, we, the Buddhist monk who practice Buddhism with uh, compassion, 
wisdom and non-violence. We would like to continue our teachings of Buddha with those who are interested in Buddhism. Our traditional difference from other in the area, so people might be confused the way we practice. I hope that the city council member will make a good decision and proper decision that will bring benefit to everyone. May all know be well and happy. Thank you. Thank you. I was at the planning commission meeting on the 13th of this month and most of them came up with the general complaint that they were worried about the activities at the monastery bringing down their property values. Some of these houses are more than a mile and a half away on the other side of Princess Anne Road or on the other side of uh, West Neck Creek. It just doesn't seem to make any sense to me and when there's a trailer park nearby and a, a concrete uh, business right across, uh, right up the street and um, you know, an old rundown abandoned barn across the street. These people are good, decent people. They're good, decent neighbors. And, uh, you know, one gentleman complained that he didn't like the statuary in the front yard because he thought that it looked like a junkyard. I live across the street from a man that's got five or six old junky cars in his <laughs> front yard. I know what it is to truly live <coughs> across the street from somebody that's got junk in their front yard. So. Um, the neighbors should be thankful that the monks are there because they couldn't ask for more peaceful, kind, and compassionate neighbors. The request for a two-year extension of this resident for a large educational center is not consistent with the existing land use, the view shared, and expectations of the rural property owners. This is an agriculture zone area, so what would you expect? You expect large farm equipment operating early and late with noise and spray. He would also expect uh, aromas associated with the horses and uh, food animals. The application is, uh, is not this. It's not, not compatible. Um, this is very difficult. Um, and absolutely, I have no belief that this city is intolerant and the people in this city are intolerant. And I have absolutely no belief that there's prejudice involved in the concern for the people who have questioned this. I think they made very plain that this is seen as a land use issue. And I think what we've heard tonight uh, from the folks who have come to question this has been a steady uh, accounting of people who did their due diligence when they purchased their homes and purchased their homes based on what our comprehensive plan and our land use policy said. And they clearly said that these folks could expect uh, residential uh, in this area or either uh, agriculturally compatible uses. Um, given our comprehensive plan given our zoning requirements, uh, given the clear action that the council took last year, uh, I would move that this application for extension be denied. Motion by Mrs. Henley, seconded by Mrs. McClannan. Are we ready for the question? I vote of 82. You have denied the application for the Buddhist Education Center. Ooh, that was a shock. Yeah, we were we were kind of flabbergasted because we were in the we were in the meeting where they that city council meeting there, and the um, uh, the people came up and they gave all of the information, and everybody seemed to be um, uh, very forthright about it, and everything seemed to be going real well and then all of a sudden it was like uh, yeah this is good yeah that's good yeah that's good and then all of a sudden they said oh sorry no we're gonna, we're not going to do it and it, it's like yeah. how can you say no when you've got all this information and everything was done according to what you asked to be done 
Yeah, they had a list of stipulations that they had asked the temple to comply to, and every item on the list that they asked about had been taken care of. Um, looking at the strictly as land use decision, uh, the staff write-up says, uh, it says, concludes the applicant is in compliance with these conditions. Um, however, the um, neighbors disagree uh, on a number of them. Can you tell me how the staff arrived at the conclusion that they're? What we did is after you approved it last year, the planner who handled this application went out on site and counted the number of, sta of statues, and we documented that. Um, we, we went back once we had, when he had, we had a recent complaint that there had been more added. It looked to us like it was the same number of statues, but they had been moved. Some had been moved out front. The condition doesn't say they can't be moved. It said it had to meet, they had to meet the setbacks, and they do all meet the, the required setbacks. The other big one, of course, is the number of people who visit the, the site. Um, what we've done, we, we checked it sporadically throughout the year, you know, at least once a week. But since they came back uh, and reapplied for the months of June, July, and August, I've had a zoning inspector go by twice on Sunday during the, the 10 to 1 o'clock period. And um, I've got pictures June, July, and August every Sunday, if you'd like me to pass those around. And Wait, would you mind? Can we? The, the number of cars, you know, when, when we went by, well, you can see from the pictures, I mean, it varies between 9 and 15. So we had no reason to believe that they were in violation of the numbers. So we thought, this is really good. And then, especially when they talked about the Reluca law, about religious freedom and um, not banning people from practicing of their religion, um, we were absolutely shocked when they said no. We could not believe it. The city was denying our clients the right to worship according to their faith beliefs, which is a violation of the First Amendment and uh, they were violating their rights to associate, which is a violation of the Constitution, uh, and um, various other constitutional rights. And the hammer, if you will, uh, was the violation of our LUPA, the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act. And, and our basic argument was that the City of Virginia Beach was excluding this particular religious use um, when in fact there were other religious uses in that very zone or that very area. And so therefore that creates what we call a discriminatory um, um, effect because certain uses are allowed, certain are not allowed. You're in, you're not in. So we had a very, very good lawsuit and the city agreed as soon as we filed it to to uh, allow our clients to continue worshiping during what we call the pendency of the lawsuit. And so basically what we did is uh, we resurrected the old conditional use permit and so they were basically allowed to operate as if the conditional use permit never expired. And we're continuing to, to work uh, with the city to secure a place for the monks so that they can uh, continue what they're doing and grow their uh, Buddhist education center in Hampton Road. So we're hopeful that that happens and uh, we're hopeful that the city continues assisting us um, uh, throughout the, that process. The temple is just the play for us to practice. It's not the whole situation. The situation is the temple in our, our, our mind. The, the, the thing we think, different from the reality, from the Buddha teaching, that's the world changing, the body changing, and the mind changing. Everything is changing. But I would like to, to keep that idea. That's okay for them. We don't argue, we go there and argue with them. Oh, you have to change. But they will realize that. Changing is on progress. And you can see that on a row, that will be more, more house. Well, I, I believe wholeheartedly in preserving the culture of, of Pungo because it's valuable. It's valuable to this entire city. And, and, um, 
But I believe that as people from Pungo, we have to be willing to expose our, our children to other religions and other cultures and make them aware of their value because, you know, the world's getting smaller and we, we can't stop that. We can't, we can't live in a little society of, that, you know, may see an outsider <laughs> every week or once a month. It, that's not going to happen any longer. The, the, the important thing is how to teach the new generation, the next generation, to keep the good thing. And some of the, the, the thing that many generations before now doesn't, we couldn't apply in this moment, in this time. So we have to adopt something new. We have to step up to the, to the plate and, and teach our children that we can still maintain our, our, our culture, our values, our quality of life. It may change, but we, we can still hold on to those values but respect and um, learn about other cultures. I've tried to do it with my children and I think we've been very successful in exposing them to things because I don't want them to be narrow-minded and um, enclosed thinkers. I want them to be open to the world around them and to learn and um, grow. Like us, when we came to America, we couldn't bring all the Vietnamese tradition here to apply to the, a new environment. We have to change, but we not lost ourselves. And uh, the, the people who are from here, I think, they would like to keep their way of life. We r respect that. I've been exposed on um, very small scale to other cultures, and there's things I've learned that are very valuable and they're just not part of my culture but that doesn't mean we dismiss them we, we we try to glean things from other cultures that can benefit us and as a society society grow and mesh together and become better people hopefully <laughs> more tolerant impermanence is everywhere that's the the universal law, but experience by ourselves very important, not the language. The language is impermanent, but how we see it is important. And when things happen, we accept it. We see it like it's the reality. And whenever we see that thing happen, we don't get frustrated. We don't feel uncomfortable. Just let it go. I, I yield that concept in practice and apply in the situation here. When things happen, not good for the temple, that's impermanent. And when you accept it, you feel better. You feel okay. And when it happens, if you don't accept, you don't feel good with that, you get angry. And the situation the same. The problem is only us, right? The only, only us who get angry. It's uh, our fault. Uh, I think in another way in uh, USA, like when they got a problem, the community support to solve that problem. But in our culture, like you have to have a, a rule. They say have a rule because you can. You don't have a big root. How can you keep the cheese sane? It's a difficult uh, another <laughs> culture. So the temple they need the the root. 
the foundation. The foundation, the good foundation. How many supporters do you think you lost oh, because lost of the trouble lot. with the city? Mm. We lost a lot. Right now we have almost like uh, 20 something. Oh. How many? How right. many percent? The percent? Yeah. I think more than, more than, more than 50. More than 50 yeah. percent? The percent we lost is not important. But the, how to say, the, the, the feeling, the, the feeling, feeling of the forward. Because the percent, usually, you know, it's up and down. The percent, sometimes they're busy, they're not busy, they cannot come. But the feeling, yeah, the feeling is very important. It's very easy to understand that the monthly donation. <clears throat> In terms of seven, we have a long list. But it's now just this. Monthly donation and a cup. You have to leave this house. Yeah, leave this. that's certain, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's being sold. I saw the sign outside. Yeah. yeah. By the bank. By the bank. Yeah. Okay. And the uh, next foreclosure is November twenty. Okay. We and can negotiate with them to get a little extension time. I think maximum around two. Two more. So you may be in here until next year? No, yeah. I don't think. The end of this year. I think the end, of, the this end of this year. <laughs> and you're hoping to go to Salem Road in Virginia Beach? Salem Road is the target. Sometimes we just need a, a quiet place to think about our life. If we could have this play for the temple, uh, that's a wonderful thing. Because we have the roots so that the tree can grow very healthy and it will blossom in the future. And you know what? There's a amazing thing that we we didn't know this play until the city people come to offer to us. That perfect, you know. How can we know this play? Until they say, oh, we have a play for you to build a temple. And you can do anything you want over there. And we say, wow, where is that? So we came and we said, that's perfect. And you see that everything here, people, people just come and say, that's, that's beautiful. The land. There's tree. We have we will be a forest monk here. <laughs> the temple is uh, for everyone, not only all Vietnamese. Although all Vietnamese now is a uh, American too, <laughs> right? And so that's why we serve for the resident here, the community here. We not just save. Vietnamese or American, who can help welcome, and that's the place for everyone. The temple is for everyone. We don't care they are a Christian or there's Christian, but they're still human. We serve the human. That's why the Buddhism come from. Beyond suffering, right? The way of suffering. That the uh, two message the Buddha sent out. There's suffering. And there's a way of suffering. And end up suffering. That's for human, right? And we serve human. So not a ski a white or yellow color. The color is a is a where we born. But we have the same blood, the same human being, right? So welcome everyone here. If we build a temple here, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> it disappears. It becomes blurred. <laughs> uh, what's going to happen with the books? Where are they going? How is this going to play out? What are your hopes and fears? 
Well, we've told them we have a futon available <laughs> in, in our Florida room. <laughs> Lots of people have offered rooms to them because people want them here. I think it's all going to come together. I try to look at things that when an adverse situation happens, it's to help us get stronger, maybe band together a little tighter and work harder to make something happen that we think is important to have. And I think that's important to have. And I know there's a lot of people who feel the same way. So my hope is that's going to bring everyone closer and we're all going to work together harder and it's going to work out good. Yeah, one of, one of the really nice things about this is that we're beginning to discover each other in, these, in this adversity that we're facing. We're beginning to find our faults and our places that we excel. And we're beginning to find our little niche in, in the, where we're at with the ongoing, um, whether you want to call it comedy or our... Uh, the divine play. Divi <laughs> the, the divine play, yes. <laughs> Well, you know, one of the really good things I think that's happening is that getting all of this out in the media, the TV and the newspapers, so many more people in our community are becoming aware of their presence who didn't know of them before, and they're so happy to hear of them. So it's really a good thing. This is uh, the old temple. We didn't do hearing, we didn't do all of that. But wherever the monk lived, we call a temple. So we call this uh, the old temple. And uh, the master monk, first temple in the Virginia Beach is here. Yeah. When was that? Uh, 1998. Okay, so shall we go inside? Yeah. yeah. for moving back for a temporary waiting for the the land from Salem Bro. So this was the, the site of the temple before you moved to Panga? Yes. And now because of the situation over there you'll be moving back? Yeah, for temporary. And uh, the, the owner just say the temporary we have to move out, we have to find a place. Yeah. So I, Are you happy about coming back here? Yes, because uh, better than we don't have a place to live. <laughs> so what is some of the work that's being done now to fix it? Yeah, we do the electri elect electrical, we do the um, cleaning. We can have the classroom here. We can have this area for the classroom. When people come here to study, by the time they can meditate here, they can Enjoy the environment here. How do you think? It was good. Yeah. Yep. In the room for the class. Mm. We decorate this area for uh, our own room for the um, Buddhist follower who passed away. So you'll have the photographs and candles and incense and all that over there? Yeah. Are some of the Buddhist followers a little bit upset about having to move the honoring room from one place to another? Yes, of course. Because that, that because whenever people pass away in our tradition that we should keep stable and move all the time. But because of the temple, wherever we, we live, we have to invite all of them to come to, with us. Like a Buddha, the Buddha had to go to. <laughs> yeah. I see you have a Buddha statue in here. Yeah, for all I took away, because of, he would like to protect this area. Protect, because he, he had to stay here at night time. Oh, so it took... 
Japanese. Thing. And we will share a slip in here until we move there. Okay. We don't want people to come to destroy like last time. Okay. Yeah, you did have a little bit of vandalism. Yes. Uh, see that. See this. The window, they broke this window too. Yeah, this is a temporary window, not a real window. The real window has to be like this. And they broke it. And they just pushed temporary. Mm. How much damage was done altogether? All oh, of the, uh, the building. They destroyed the whole building? Yes. I can show you one of this. I see that. How much is it costing to repair the whole thing? A lot, but we just live temporary, so we don't fit the fence, not the, the right thing. We just have this, this very, this, uh, just come Let's try it out. Is that where they broke in? Yeah. It's not easy to be a Buddhist. <laughs> I think they're very angry. They're yeah. very angry. And that's the way the way they do it. We know that they are angry. They're unhappy. So we we understand and just let it go. You don't get angry. Because that's the way we practice. We get angry that we have problem, right? Not other people. But all the time people get angry, they blame other people. Because of you I make I get angry. But they never they never see that. They have angry answer. If the the external thing happen, but don't they don't have angry. That's still okay, right? Do you think that when you move back in, you'll be safe? That's okay. When we leave here, that's okay. No problems. No problem. You certainly haven't had an easy life here. <laughs> a lot of challenges. Yeah, that's that's uh, make us stronger. Yeah, yeah, because in the hard situation, we have to practice more. Oh. And if we overcome, we succeed. Life is pass or fail. <laughs> <laughs> if we overcome, we pass. If we we get angry, we fail. And we understand that, so we try our best to stay calm, to practice, and everything is okay. Well, we thought we would take you back a little bit in time. Um, about 25 years ago, we had a Vietnamese refugee youth come over through the Catholic Family Charities who came to live with us and we were his foster parents and um, in time he moved down to North Carolina and when we used to go down there to visit him we'd go over to Charlotte and go to the Buddhist temple there with him and that's how we first started going to temples.
and um, we were really surprised when a friend of ours told us that they had driven into this street and saw all these beautiful Buddha statues and told us where it was located because nobody knew that it was there. Um, the monks are very quiet people. They're not out in the public telling you, I'm here and trying to draw people in. They just do what they do there and are there for people to come when they want to be with them and get their teachings. So we drove back there one day and the master monk came out and greeted us and showed us all around and it was really beautiful. Um, he was so cordial and open and showed us you know, all the beautiful statues and the rooms and the bells and um, you talk for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> we just fell in with, with the monks because they were so happy and and carefree yeah. more or less because you know they they had everything that they needed and we were just uh, uh, amazed at how um, quiet and subdued they were because they weren't like any of the other places where they come out and uh, grab you by the shirt collar and try to drag you in so uh, uh, it, and it was it was a nice experience they're a beautiful group of people you know, and one of the things that I see is the difficulty is that um, so many people, when they see somebody who looks different than they are, their skin might be different color, or they talk different, or from a different country, or have a different religious path, that they don't understand. Um, a lot of people will, will put up um, blocks and concerns about it and not take the time out to get to know who they are. And if they did, they would see what beautiful people they are. Our son just recently brought his uh, fiance from Vietnam over to this country, and they just got married at the temple. And we had a very uh, rich, integrated uh, service that was um, on the there was an integration between the Vietnamese Buddhist religion and a little bit of Western um, where the, everything was translated back and forth. And uh, we had all of our Western friends there on the Saturday night and then on the Sunday night we had a, another um, reception that was a Vietnamese re reception. And um, it, was, it was a really nice, beautiful everybody that we talked to at uh, the service uh, seemed very um, very uh, happy and joyful and and that th what what's out in the ordinary they're just like we are mm -hmm. holy cow isn't that neat <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. a lot of people afterwards have told me that they were so impressed with the um, attitude of the monks how beautiful and friendly they were with the words that were said in the ceremony because part of their vows were to help support each other, to be good people and useful people in the community and to be the best that they can. And that's quite impressive. <laughs> if we all lived that way, we'd have a much better world, I think. Keep the truth. Something like that. It is, it, is, um, it is really a fantastic thing to have not just you know a place where you can come together and have a wedding like this in a traditional Vietnamese culture, but one where we can really you know blend Vietnamese with American culture and, and make a ceremony that's truly unique and that's got a sense of community behind it. So it really was a wonderful experience. The ceremony was so beautiful and the, the laughter was so um, pervasive and too many of our ceremonies are too serious and that's a good start right there. Have you ever been to a ceremony like this at a Buddhist temple? No. I've been here before but not uh, to, to a wedding so it was beautiful. Other faiths should be invited to see there's nothing to fear. You know? It was a wonderful ceremony. I was really touched by all the beautiful things that they had to say. And um, I'm so happy for our son and for his wife and daughter. They're a great family. And I'm so thankful this 
temple was here for us to have it here. It would not have been the same. This is probably going to be the last uh, big event here. Very possibly. Unless something dramatic happens. In, unless there's a modern day miracle, huh? How do you feel about that? Well, it's a good thing to have an event like this because of the fact that it's a, a continuation of um, the, the, the ongoing family and the continuation of generations and uh, for that to be the last thing that happens at a temple, I, would, I feel that that's very, uh, very auspicious.